Today we rebuild Manchester United to the greatest team in England, exactly where we belong to be. Stick around to see an unbelievable tactic in action and hopefully multiple Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues in the next five years without any transfers, youth only. This is going to be quite some test. What's going on there guys, Kempi here and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my first ever proper rebuild. Now I'm very, very excited from this. If you can't tell from the general theme, the two tops behind me, the wonderful jacket I'm wearing. I'm a massive Manchester United fan and I have been my whole entire life and things seem to be getting better. A few poor results, well, I say poor results, so a fantastic game on the weekend of a loss against Arsenal, but a fantastic game, a progression all around us. I think it's a great time to rebuild the Manchester United team with the youth only as well because it's very easy with Manchester United, especially with the tactic I'm going to show you guys today to just absolutely storm the world and take the whole world as your oyster because they're fantastic. They've got all the money in the world. It's not too difficult and normally on FM as well, you do get new owners fairly soon. So today we're going to be rebuilding Manchester United, a five season rebuild and we start on the 27th of June 2022. Now, um, I am very excited for this. Um, the squad itself is a bit bat. There's a few old men in here. There's a few bits we want trimmed. There's a few bits we need to sort out. Um, players need to go out on loan. Players need to go into the starting lineup. And we need to create our tactic. And the tactic we are using today, if you watched Tuesday's video, I implore you to go and watch that first of all. It is the GYR8910 Hog. Now this tactic is built on the 10 Hog style of play. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing for the next five years as well. We're playing a 10 Hog style of play. A 4-2-3-1. I'm going to go through very quickly each individual uh, position. I'm not going to go through their individual player uh, stats. If you want to go through that, that is all on Tuesday's video. Um, but yeah, we're playing a sweep keeper on attack in goal, a wing back on attack on the right, a full back on attack on the left, two ball playing defenders in the base of the uh, defence, a I always say a role-playing midfielder, a roaming playmaker um, on the left, a ball-winning midfielder on support on the right, an advanced playmaker attack in the cam spot, an advanced forward on the left, which is our Marcus Rashford, an inverted forward on the right as a support, um, and a target forward on attack, which, looking at the Manchester United team, it does not suit currently. Um, with Valt Weghorst obviously coming in, maybe it suits a little bit more, but this is the way Ten Hag plays. Uh, you know, this is built around his sort of target forward style of play. Obviously, you can normally have a false nine as well, um, sort of the Dusan Tadic era. But if we're looking at Sebastian Haller and the way the United seem to be playing with that target forward, um, then that's how we're going to be doing this tactic. Now, the actual tactic is positive, um, shorter style of play, passing wise, very high tempo. It's nice and wide. It's working the ball into the box. Um, it's counter attacking. Uh, counter pressing as well. We know United do that very well now. Uh, we're getting much more better, more better, much better. Uh, at it. Uh, the trigger of the press seems to be better, and that's something we're going to be doing as well. A uh, very often a uh, trigger of press. We're going to be getting stuck in a high defensive line, a high press, the full shebang. Now, we, as I have said, this is going to be a youth only rebuild. So there'll be absolutely no signings going from here on out. So this is the squad. We've got to work with. And there is one big name in here that won't be sticking around. That is Cristiano Ronaldo. It'd be easy to keep Ronaldo in the team for the whole longevity. But we're going to keep it semi-realistic. He's going to be staying here till January. And also going to Al Nasir. Which does mean that big Voot Veghorst is also coming to Manchester. Now I've had to do this as a transfer of him joining on the 1st of Jan 2023. It's not just a six month loan. Um, I hope you guys don't mind that but I don't mind signing Voot in real life even a full time. I can see it potentially happening at the end of this season. So Voot is coming in in January. Um, he's going to be joining in up front. Um, so now I've got this tactic. We are going to be setting some ground rules as well. I'm going to look to get two players of the youth. Uh, well two Manchester youth players in from the very start. Now, what I'm classing as youth players is Garnacho is a youth player. Hannibal Medjbury is a youth player. Um, Amad Diallo I'm classing as a youth player. Now, these are young players that United have signed from a very young age. Um, but in my eyes, I see them as youth players. Now, it would be very difficult as if I was to stick to um, Shola Shura Tire from season one and bits like that. And this tactic is very good, but maybe not that good. We'll see. We've got five years to sim. Um, we'll see if we can keep a job while playing just the kids. And then the final season, we do want to have 11 youth players out. Um, so it'll be season one, I'm going to do two. Uh, season two, I'm going to try and do three or four. Season three, I'm going to do five or six. Season four, seven or eight. And then the final season will be a full 11 
goalkeeper, which scares me because right now, looking at the prospects, the goalkeepers, it's not looking good. Um, so we need to get one from the youth system, ideally. Um, but I'm going to go forward. I'm going to stick in uh, Marcus Rashford up front, wherever he may be. He's going to be our player at target forward on attack for the whole season. And Alejandro Garnacho is going to come up into the first team as well. And he is going to play every single game possible for himself um, for this season and for the seasons after this as well. So Garnacho on the left, Rashford down the middle. The rest is going to be up to the assistant manager. I'm going to go through, go through and loan loads of players out and um, sell a few players potentially, but I'll show you that all at the end of the season, the transfer business we did do. Um, and then bring you guys back for the end of the season where hopefully we've still got a job. I haven't got the editor on, so I can't make myself unsackable. It's purely going to show you how fantastic this tactic is. And this tactic is down in the description below, as is GYRFM's FM base. So if you want to test out any of his tactics, they're all down there as well. But let's get into it. Season, well, the end of season number one. Let's see how things got on. Well, we've loaded in and we've done very well, actually. Third place for Manchester United after the first season. Um, not outrageous. You can see from the tactic video that I released on Tuesday, I believe we come second in the league with this tactic. This time, third. Liverpool storm in the league at 90 points. City, five points behind them on 85. But we are a comfortable third on 75. Six points ahead of Newcastle in fourth, which is Fairly realistic, just swap Liverpool and Arsenal when you've pretty much got the top four in real life. Um, Forest, Everton and Leicester getting relegated, but how did we get on? Now let's go into this and have a little look. Um, appearances wise, Varane was 60, um, Rashford was 60 appearances, 38 goals and 6 assists. Marcus Rashford have a season, son. Um, a 7.01 average rating, 38 games in the Premier League, played every single one, 24 goals, five assists, five player of the matches. But where is Alejandro? 54 games, 15 goals and 10 assists. I tell you what, that is good. And you can see his stats here. We're going to be tracking how well Alejandro does. That is a very good first season for him. Obviously, thrown into the Premier League. He started 33 games, 8 goals, 7 assists. Now, obviously, if he gets any injuries or any red cards, same with Rashford, they do go out of the team. Um, hence why he's only played 54. Uh, yeah, 54. Rashford, every single game by the looks of it. Him and Varane have been fantastic. Um, De Gea in gold. Dallow having a good season as well. Uh, Lutra at the back having a good season. Casemiro. We love Casemiro. He did very well as well. Um, a few of the younger players down here. Pelesci didn't play too much. Elanga didn't. Axel didn't. Uh, Isaac Cancelaren got an appearance. Brandon Williams got an appearance. Um, Tom Heaton played three games. Harry Maguire starting just two games. That's not a good look for him, is it? Um, how did Big Voot get on? Voot, uh, Voot didn't play a single game. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, what I do is I just sim the season. I get him in. Um, and then I pretty much just sim from the very start to the very end. And Voot didn't have a great time, did he? Zero games. Let's hope that picks up a little bit uh, next season. We'll see. Obviously, we're going to do some sims. But when Rashford's not getting injured at all, and probably Martial was the man off the bench. Yeah, 44 games off the bench for Martial with five uh, goals. But competitions-wise, it's not just the Premier League. How do we do? We won the Europa League. A 1-0 win against Arsenal. That is very good to see. Uh, the Europa League is ours. So we are in the Champions League next season via the Premier League and via the Europa League, which is fantastic. A runner-up in the Carabao Cup as well. You know what? I wouldn't mind this in real life. A top three finish, a Europa League, a runner-up in the Carabao. It would probably mean losing to Newcastle in the final, which might sting a little bit. And getting knocked out in the FA Cup fifth round by Arsenal isn't the worst season in the world. Um... In terms of development centre, uh, obviously a lot of the boys are back off loan now. Um, for example, Hannibal, I think, is back. If we go to the overview, it's probably easier. Um, Hannibal was back. He is probably going to be going in for next season. I'm going to go through and sort all these out. Um, show you guys again who we've got going out on loan. I'll do that That probably next time. The, the saving, I think I oversaved the, first end, the start of the season one. I oversaved that with the end of season one, accidentally about halfway through. So I lost what I did. Um, but Hannibal, Ahmad, uh, Alvaro Fernandez is someone I think we're going to be using as well. Um, Joey Hugo, Ethan Laird. Um, I made a bit of an error with Ethan Laird. He is off to Olympic Marseille on a free contract. He's the only one that I managed to miss when doing the sim, sadly. Um, but he is the only player leaving. If we have a look at the transfer history um, in terms of outs, uh, in terms of in story, obviously just Vekost, um, out. So Ronaldo went out alone with Shoratire, Charlie McNeil, Kobe Mainu, someone I really want to make utilize this season. And um, Charlie Savage, Nathan Bishop, uh, Bernard, Mengi, Iqbal all went out on loan. So I did do all them loans. So that is good from me. Um, looking at the spot, uh, the finances, the debts, 
obviously riddled with debt, sadly. Um, I think it's going to be very difficult to get that down because regardless of the money we make, the debt repayments are just as high. We need new owners and we need them to clear that. Um, so that's what we're going to leave it as of the uh, end of Season 1. I'm going to bring you guys back for the start of Season 2 when I've hopefully got the players I want in the right positions. I've got players out on loan and transfers done. Um, and we'll see. Start of Season 2. Can we have a better season than Season 1? It's going to be difficult to top that. A third place finish and Europa League. Let's just go forward, see the players we are going to be using for Season 2. And also see the loans we have made going out. Just a very, very quick interruption for myself. This took a very long time to make and sim and rebuild. And a lot of sort of going in depth into stats on players as well on my side. To make sure the team was as good as possible for the whole of the five years. So if you can, make sure just to drop a like and a comment down below saying you did like this episode. Uh, well, this little um, rebuild, in fact, because it's the first one I've ever done, and it'll be a lot to me if we can get some great support on this. So smash the like, drop a comment down below on who you want me to rebuild next, because I will be doing one for next week as well of another GYRFM tactic. So your guys' support means a lot. So make sure to subscribe, like the video, let me know down below what you want up next. Let's get in to the start of Season 2. Right then, here I am, the start of Season 2. I've got the players in the team that I want to be playing every single game this season. It's Rashford up front again. It's Garnacho on the left. It's Hannibal as the left centre mid replacing Ericsson. And it's Alvaro Fernandez as the left back. Now, Alvaro is a player I like very much in real life. He's doing quite well at Preston, if you don't know who he is. Um, he is someone we signed from Real Madrid. I believe at the same time as Garnacho. Obviously, Garnacho from Atletico. But I think these guys came over together as well as Mark Gerardo. Um, but Alvaro Fernandez, a fantastic left back in real life and someone we want to see how he grows as well so four years of Alvaro Fernandez in that left centre mid role four years of Hannibal playing every game in this role sadly on a bit of down form stats wise right now but I can guarantee you that is going to shoot up because he is fantastic on this game a value of nearly 50 million already and um, Garnacho on this left hand side hopefully an even better second season for him and Rashford as the striker this is the squad we have got here we've got Kobe Mainu, um still at the club sure Tire has got a bit of a loan on him, so he should be going out to relegated Leicester. Um, and Kobe, I think, does leave as well. Um, Lindelof is staying around. Varane staying around. Dallo De Gea is going to be playing the most games in goal. Um, Diallo, I think, is going to go out on loan. Bruno is going to play as the cam normally. Um, I have loaned out um, Toro Malassia. Veghorst is hopefully going to stay at the club. McTominay, I believe, stays at the club. Luke Shaw is staying. Kovar is staying as the backup keeper to De Gea. Um, Sancho Tuanzebe stays as the backup. Juan Basaka, Eriksen, Anthony, Fred, I think, is leaving. Uh, Casemiro and Lissandro Martinez. And the sales we have made as well for this season. Obviously, no one coming in. Um, the in the outgoings, though, bailly has gone to Marseille with Ethan Laird. Um, Andre Massini's gone. Bjorn Hardley's gone. Elanga we sold for £24.5 million. Now, Elanga is mainly a left winger. And we've got Garnacho who is going to play every single game out there. So he is our left winger. We've also got Sancho, Anthony, Ahmad, Palestri, all these players that can battle for that position. So we decided to sell him for some very good money. Um, Dean Henderson is out the door for £4 million. Uh, and then the loans is Galbraith, Bishop, Berry, Joe Hugel, Charlie Savage, Tenemengi, Malaki Sharp, um, Toby Collier, Will Fish, Noah Emeron have all gone out on loan. Alex Tellez has gone to Bournemouth. Uh, Mark Gerardo is on loan. Van der Beek, Maguire. Forson, Tyler Richardson, uh, Tyler Frederickson, sorry, uh, Daniel Gore and Isaac Hanzaron are all out on loan. So there is a lot of fantastic youth talent that have gone out on loan. Um, let's see how season two goes. I'm expecting it to go fairly similar to season one. I take another top three position. I take uh, the knockout rounds of both of the Champions League would be quite nice and maybe a domestic trophy as well. Let's sim season two and see how things are getting on. I think that shows how good the tactic is, doesn't it? We've stormed the Premier League. We've won the Champions League final 4-0 against Manchester City. We've won the Super Cup. Knocked out in the semis, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. But overall, we were absolutely brilliant this season. We were top of the Premier League from, I'm going to guess, about November. Got gobsmacked is the word. Absolutely gobsmacked at this tactic. GYRFM, you are a genius. You can see it is the same four players in the position. You can see as well from the appearances, they have played a lot of games. Alvaro Fernandez, I think I made an error where he went out on loan. He did, but I managed to catch it and got him back in. So we had three players in the team for this season and Alvaro for the second half. Still absolutely wild. 50 games for Hannibal Medri in that centre mid role. 57 for Gonacho with 13 goals and 9 assists, but... 
Marcus Rashford. 62 appearances, 44 goals and 5 assists. Wow. That is quite some season for Marcus. Bruno Fernandes with a fantastic season. That's Dennis Ackerman's field spot as well with 21 goals and 15 assists. Anthony looks like a very good provider off the right. 33 games, 16 goals, 7 assists. What a season. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Um, looking at the players that went out on loan, sorted by average rating. Sam Mather has had a very good season at Cambridge. I like Sam a lot in real life. He's a very, very good little player. Um, Tyrrell Malassio did well at Bishop Shortier. did well at Leicester in the Championship. Quite a difficult side to break into, I imagine, but he done it very well indeed. Isaac Hansen, Arrowen, good over in Oxford. Um, Tenemengi at Ipswich. McNeil at AEK, I think is the striker long term. Um, so he's probably going to come in in the next couple of seasons. We'll maybe give it one more season of Rashford up front to see if we can go back to back and then work things out. We can get Garnacho, Rashford and McNeil in the team. Um, but yeah, an unbelievable season. Um, I can't quite believe we've actually done that. Should we watch this game against Champions League? We'll watch the 4-0 win, shall we? It was a Bruno Fernandes brace, a Garnacho goal and an Ericsson goal as well. Um, we even got Martinez sent off in the 25th minute. So we played this game with 10 men for the whole thing. Um, Rashford got injured as well. Haaland missed a penalty. Ah, so we went, well, let's just watch this. But Haaland misses a penalty and Martinez gets sent off for giving away the penalty as well. Um, this might be the only chance we get to watch some highlights of this. So let's enjoy the wonderful tactic in all of its beauty and awe. Um, let's just pause this and sort this out. This is horrible. Um, let's get this nice. Let's get that nice and get some zoom on it, shall we? And see this tactic in its beauty. It's a very slow as well. You can tell um, this is brand new. Bruno Fernandes with an absolute belter there from the edge of the box. So Bruno Fernandes corner as well. Headed clear. Drops to Garnacho. Oh my God, I thought he was going to score from there. In there, he scores from there. Alejandro Garnacho. What a finish that is. Um, a corner ball for us. Looks like he's bounced out again. Garnacho involved. Hannibal Medri. What a ball that is. And a Bruno Fernandes. Goal there coming in from the byline. And an Ericsson free kick finds Bruno Fernandes. Ericsson picks it up again. And an absolute perler. Basically, we had 10 men and we scored four absolute worldies. Now, this Man City team is absolutely no slouch. Um, I mean, Haaland got taken off and he looked absolutely battered as well. And a 6.1 after missing that penalty. But quite the performance there. 4-0, four, four fantastic goals. Garnacho looks an absolute talent. Hannibal getting an assist as well in the Champions League final. It's all things we love to see as United fans. We're going to go forward now to the start of Season 3 and see if we can do this back-to-back. -back. Show you guys the youth players that are going to play in Season 3 as well. Safe to say this is going to be a rather busy season. We've got the Premier League, the Champions League league phase now, so that's brand new. And um, the Super Cup, FA Cup, Carabao Cup and the Community Shield. There's a chance here for a six-tuple. I don't think it's going to happen. It would be absolutely outrageous if it does. And um, This is the team I think we're going to be playing, so it'll be De Gea in goal. Brandon Williams as a youth player as the right back. Varane and Martinez as the two centre-backs. Alvaro Fernandez as the left back. Um, Kobe Mainu as the centre mid next to Hannibal Medri. Now I do believe there was a mistake and he goes out on loan this season and he comes back in next season. That might be me tripping, but we'll see. Um, Hannibal, Amadiolo on the right wing, Bruno Fernandes in cam, Garnacho as a left wing with Rashford down the middle. I think you'll agree having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Manchester United youth players in the starting eleven is rather impressive. Can we go to the same level this season and win the league, win the Champions League and maybe even win a treble as well if we can get an FA Cup in there. If we can remake the treble, scenes, absolute scenes. In terms of players that are out on loan, um, some very good ones. Hanson Aaron's out on loan again. Um, I think these boys have extended their loans and all these lads are gone out as well. Um, the youth system is slowly depleting because players are not quite good enough. Um, but yeah, in terms of transfers, uh, and where is the transfers out bit? Transfer history. Transfers out. Uh, the Sean Bernard's gone out on loan. Donny van der Beek has left the club. Gerardo has left the club. Emeron's left the club. Willy Kawambalawa is a very good young player. Um, but he is out of the club as well. I don't think he's ever going to make it for us. Um, so he is gone. Um, Telemengi is out on loan. Charlie Savage is out on loan. Nathan Bishop has gone to Millwall. Hugo is out on loan. Reese Bennett is out on loan. Maguire has gone to Lazio. Uh, Forsen is out on loan. Palestri, we sold him to RB Salzburg. Um, I think we're going to concentrate on Shura Tire 
and um, Ahmad as our two right wingers. So Palestri has left the club. Um, Isaac Hansen Arawan has got a season on loan at St Etienne. So if he smashes it there, or well, he could be a real force in the centre midfield. Um, Dan Gore has got out alone. Matty Kovar has left the club to Wolfsburg because he can get a work permit. And I was hoping he was going to be our goalkeeper. So I'll show you guys who I think is going to be the goalkeeper next up. Um, Ethan Galbraith has got out alone. Veghorst has left the club. Sam Mavis has got out alone. Uh, Ogiebene has got out alone. And Adam Berry has got out alone. And the goalkeeper for season 10 is going to be the Lion. Lion Blenkinsop. Ble 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 Blenkinsop. He come through our youth system. Um, I think he is going to be the goalkeeper that gets used for season five. I'm going to delay the goalkeeper as long as possible because I know how key it is to have a good goalkeeper. And De Gea can do a very good job still. He is declining. Um, he's obviously 33 years of age now. But we'll see. We can't sign anyone. It is the Lion hopefully taking over in season five. Um, yeah, but in terms of competitions, let's go for a back-to-back let's go for a treble with seven youth players that would be outrageous um a domestic cup champions league qualification and the quarterfinals of the champions league at a class as a successful season let's just see how good this tactic is and how much it can carry us maybe the most difficult season so far the most disappointing as well fifth place in the champions league with crystal palace coming in fourth Patrick, it's not even Patrick Vieira, it's Arnie Slot is working absolute magic over at Palace. But we've come in fifth, and thankfully due to our fantastic Europa coefficient and getting to the quarterfinals last year with a new league phase, we've been given a Champions League spot, so a chance next year to get back in the Champions League. But fifth place isn't a fantastic finish. Um, the winner of the Community Shield, woo! The winner of the Super Cup, woo! Uh, Semi-finals of the FA Cup. Um, and the fourth round of the Carabao Cup is a bit disappointing. So still no FA Cup to our name, I don't believe. So it'd be good to add one of them at some point. Let's see how the boys did and who played all the games. De Gea was 61 appearances. Ahmad Diallo with 58 appearances this season. Seven goals, eight assists. Uh, he looks very, very good, to be fair, as a right winger. Only two star, but he looks great in terms of his stats. Uh, Rashford with another season down the middle um, as a target forward on attack. You can see... It doesn't suit him at all, but he's still scoring so many goals. So if you get a striker that's big and can hold the ball, he there'll be absolute magic for you up front. And um, Alvaro Fernandez is a left back, a very good season indeed. 52 games played, one goal, seven assists from him. And um, Alejandro Garnacho as the left winger, 16 goals, 10 assists. Now an 80 to 110 million pound transfer value. That is a bit wild. Um, but Garnacho has done very well. And you can see he's actually now Spanish. I think he's been Spanish the whole time, actually. Um, so interesting that he is now Spanish origin rather than Argentinian. Um, Hannibal, yeah, he turned that down form into up form. Between 60 and 67 million transfer value. 49 appearances, 13 assists. And Brandon Williams as well from right backs had a good season. Um, he actually looks very good and has progressed very, very nicely indeed. Um, Komenu did go out on loan like I thought he did accidentally did that that was really annoying i think it'd have been very good for us in dm but maybe we would have got sacked because with case in cdm i feel a lot more comfortable than young kobe and um, but next season he will certainly be there and um, 42 appearances vote down the championship and a very good season for him and um, in terms of transfers we'll get into that next up but i think you could agree maybe a season of consolidation and just getting this youth a little bit more uh, but maybe a little bit more realistic. You can see actually we were second in the league for a long period of time. Um, but maybe a bit more realistic. Coming in fifth, seven youth players next season. Let's try and top that. I'll show you how things have gone in the team we are going to go into season four with up next. We're switching up this season. Rashford out on the left where he belongs. Garnacho is going to go down through the middle instead of Bruno Fernandes. And Charlie McNeil is going to get the nod as the striker up front. I think actually he can do the job fairly well as a target forward on attack. Maybe he's actually more suited to it than Marcus Rashford. And Rashford gets out on the left-hand side where he loves to be. So I think we're going to see a much better output from Rashford. Not that he's been bad at all, but I think he might even smash 30 goals this season. He might break that record somehow. That would be pretty wild if he does. But Brandon Williams is going to be our right back. Axel Twanzebe is going to get a go at centre-back. Um, obviously 27 years of age now, but still someone that has come through the United Youth Academy um, and of a bit more of an experienced head rather than going for a Tenemengi or even a Louis Jackson. Uh, Axel Twanzebe is the man. Alvaro Fernandez starts a left-back. Kobe Mainu does come in this season as our ball-winning uh, ball midfielder 
on support. So we'll see how he can do this season next to Hannibal Medbury, who is an absolute demon now. I think you can agree. Uh, Ahmad keeps the spot at right wing. Garnacho through the middle wing cam. Rashford at the left. McNeil on the uh, up top on his own. It's very, very exciting. A couple of good youth prospects here. I don't think they actually get into the team at any point. I have obviously done the sim already, but two very good players. Um, so yeah, let's see how we get on in season number four. Can we get back to winning some trophies and not just the Super Cup and the Community Shield? Let's have a little look now. Well, if you were just to look at the right side of this, it would look rather disappointing. Look at the left and we've won the bloody league. 70 five points and we've come tied on points with Chelsea but a 44 goal difference wins us the league I've got no idea how this team has done that you can see we were pretty much top a little bit in sort of I'd say that's November and October and then we were second and third the whole way to the last game of the season where Chelsea must have dropped points and we won and we won the league the round of 16 of the Champions League the fourth round of the FA Cup and the fourth round of the Carabao we're title champions we're the champions of England yet again and we've absolutely smashed it and um, the boys have done fantastic they're Charlie McNeil up front 19 goals and 52 games Rashford to be fair on the left just 24 goals this season and um, Garnacho is the cam taking that cam spot into his wings he's now an absolute uh, is it accomplished I think I don't know what it's called but he, he loves the cam spot as much as he loves left wing uh, as an advanced player we're going to attack he is fantastic 19 goals 11 assists for him um, Amad Diallo 51 games at the right wing spot Kobe Mainu with 50 appearances, Hannibal with 43, 30, uh, 49 appearances for Alvaro Fernandez, 54 for Axel, and 39 for Brandon Williams. Obviously, we are being helped. The fact that Lucha is still an ever present in the side. Varane's played 28 games as well, um, and I've lost De Gea. There he is, 53 games for De Gea as well. The Lion got a few games this season. He's going to get a hell of a lot ne uh, more next year as we go to a full youth only team. Um, but what a season. Within the Premier League, that's quite special. Um, next season, I'd like to think we can maybe get Champions League. I'm very wary we've got a two star goalkeeper in goal and another young centre back next to Axel Twanzebe. So next year is going to be very difficult. Let's go forward to the start of season five and see if we can try and get the, the team looking as good as it can. And a bit of money in the, in the door as well. Because there's a lot of players here that can now leave. We'll maybe make the bench euphony as well. Let's go forward and see what we've done. Well, if you weren't a United fan, I wouldn't blame you for not knowing a lot of the players on the bench here. These are some really good youth prospects at United. Let's go for the full squad. So the Lion starts in goal this season. Not a good start that he's already on down form. But hopefully with 60 games under his belt, we can get used to being a professional goalkeeper. Only six foot as well. It scares me. Um, Brandon Williams as the right back. Axel Twanzebe and Tenemengi as the two centre backs. Alvaro Fernandez as the left back. Kobe Mainu and Hannibal Medbury in midfield. Ahmad at the right. Garnacho in the middle. Rashford in left. And McNeil up top. The backups on the bench is Tom Wooster in goal. Dallo, we're going to keep at right back for us. Louis Jackson and Lissandro Martinez as the two centre backs. Luke Shaw is the backup left back as well. Two backup centre midfielders. We've got uh, Charlie Savage and Zidane Iqbal. So, Hannibal, Kobe, Savage, Iqbal is what we've got. Um, Charles Shorotire is the backup right winger. Hansen Arrowin is the backup centre attacker mid. Sam Mava as the backup left wing. Joe Hugel as the backup striker. And then we've got Anthony, Bruno, Dan Gore and Jack McGoffin as well. All here on the bench. It's a weak squad <laughs> if you're looking at challenging in the Champions League and you know trying to win trophies. This could be a bit of an eye-opener. We might come to the table... Or is the tactic going to carry us through to absolute glory? I mean, if we win the league with this team, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be absolutely wild. I'm predicting a Europa League finish this season. The worst we've had so far is fifth. It wouldn't surprise me if we come there again with a side like this. But let's go through to the end of this season and see how things have gone on. Well, this is an exciting end to things. A top four finish with a full youth only starting eleven. I think it's very, very impressive. The round of 16 in the Champions League, the quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup, runner-up in the Community Shield, but we've also got a final 
of the FA Cup, which we're going to do as a live com. I do live comms for every single Wrexham Let's Play we do. So we'll do one for the final. We can see the tactic in action with this wonderful youth-only Manchester United side. Now, you can see the games played. These actually did play all of these games. So Charlie McNeil was the striker. You see the stats. You can see what this tactic gets out of him. 24 goals and 7 assists. He's an absolute bagsman up here. Rashford, 32 goals. 10 assists from left wing. He's done fantastic. Garnacho in cam, 19 goals, 8 assists. He looks unbelievable. And we're between 127 and 159 million. Oh my God. Um, Amad Diallo, 43 games, 11 goals, 4 assists, but an injury. I believe it's a broken leg. It is a broken leg. Um, I saw that one happen. Not good for him. Um, Hannibal and Cobby have done very well in the two centre mid roles. The back four have actually done quite well as well. Brandon Williams seems to be a little bit injury prone in this save. But the Lion in goal, a 6.99 average rating, still only two star, but 56 games, 86 conce uh, 82 conceded is quite a lot. It's over a goal a game. Hmm, maybe not so good. I thought I was about to say he's done really well, but he's done okay. He's, you know, he's, he's still here and he's still the keeper and we've got a chance to lift silverware and I think it's our first FA Cup as well since the save started. Um, obviously two Premier Leagues, a Champions League Let's add an FA Cup to that now. Let's go for a live playthrough of this FA Cup final against the Manchester City side, which I'm guessing is very, very strong. The star ratings alone do not give me confidence of how good this game can go. It's my first time watching this tactic actually in action, so I'm very, very excited. We've got the Lion in goal, Brandon Williams at right back, to Anzebi, Mengi, Alvaro Fernandez at the back four, um, Alvaro, uh, Kobe Mainu, Hannibal as a centre mids, Shoratire comes in at right wing, Garnacho and Cam, Rashford at the left, McNeil up top, and the bench as well is entirely made up of youth players. I'm not going to use players like Bruno, Anthony, I mean centre spenders anyway, but Dallo, Shaw, Lissandro, they're not on the bench, it's kids only. And as was once said to the United boys, you can't win anything with kids. And look how the class of 92 turned out. This obviously starts in 2022. So can we, 30 years later, we've started an absolute revolution here at United. Can we make this the class of 2022? Um, the City side is Foden, Haaland, Saka, Silva, De Bruyne, Rodri, Ake, Laporte, Diaz, Cancelo, Edison. That's a ridiculous side, isn't it? But not a single youth player in it. So even who even are they? pour from them um this is hopefully not going to be an absolute pasting but it also wouldn't surprise me as well um let's just make this on the key highlights we don't want to waste not waste but we don't want to spend too much time going through this we'll get it up to our normal highlight speed etc and hopefully we'll watch united do very very well today against a very good manchester city side and it is going to be hopefully not highlights galore or city just absolutely pounding us if it is, this might never even make the video, I can't lie. <laughs> but hopefully it's going to be us putting up a bit of a fight against the money side of the game. Now, this is youth only. This is real football. You can see they're pressing forward right from the front. We're doing very well so far to contain them. Just a minute in vote. Alvaro Fernandez does very well left back there, but does lose out. to Bukayo Saka and the Lion in goal with a great save. And Williams does end up clearing Two minutes in, an early sign of things to come, possibly, with City on the front foot. Ruben Diaz with a long ball forward. Alvaro Fernandez does well to clear, but sends it right into Haaland. And that is not something you want to be doing. And City can build their possession back up here. Um, I'm hoping we get to see some nice play from this tactic. A little bit of nice football. Be good to see in a, uh, in a live video to see how this tactic can actually play um, Haaland's through on goal and he does score against the Lion he's come out a little bit too far there and Haaland has made it 1-0 to Man City in just six minutes um, it was very clear to see here centre back got pushed out into Anzebi and Haaland was just more alert to get into the space and no one really covered off to Anzebi being out of position so six minutes in we are 1-0 down to the Manchester rivals um, and eight minutes in they're going to look to double this lead it's a well headed clearance and Jao Cantelo can bring it forward Bleckensop with a good save. The Lion is here. Never fear. Um, zero shots so far. I think we're playing against a very good side, it's fair to say. So let's not beat ourselves up. Um, I'm just hoping we actually get to see a little bit from this highlight itself and not a Garnacho red card because that would be uh, absolutely awful. If I'm honest, he's been the vocal point of this U3 build from the very start. De Bruyne with a good ball in there. Saka winning the header at the back post, but he does hit the post, and can we see something from the tactic, please? Rather than just Man City, absolutely dominating us, because that is what it has been 
for this first 20 minutes. It is Ake and Laporte linking up very well. Um, but Hannibal Medry with the inception. The ball through, oh, Charlie McNeil didn't quite get on the end of it. And I'd love to see young Charlie get on the end of that one and make it 1-0 against Manchester City. But De Bruyne now trying to bring the ball forward. Finds Foden on this left-hand side. Ake, I said there was no youth players. Foden started. Damn it. Uh, Cancelo to Saka. Beats his man. And the Lion is there again. The Lion is having a great game. We're seeing how good the Lion is. It doesn't matter about the tactic. It's all about the Lion. Jokes aside, I want to see the tactic in action. Header there from Laporte. Coming close to making it 2-0. But he doesn't. And it's still only 1-0 City. Um, we've not got our first gear yet. So let's maybe... Can we go attacking? Let's go attacking and just see what the tactic does in attacking. Um, it's Rashford with a free kick to start things off. Mengi's got a chance. And Mengi just heads the ball wide of the mark but a decent chance there balling from Rashford uh, Mengi getting forward heading just wide of the mark and um, I thought this is quite a nice way to cap off this U3 build if we can win an FA Cup that would be absolutely beautiful it's Cancelo with the throw in for City it's a ball into Haaland who's of course going to win it they're going to play around nicely and the shot is blocked by Foden Brandon Williams clears it's Ake on the ball and he blasts it over thankfully um, it's just half time we've been absolutely dominated for a half football I'm going to thrash the arms and say, what was that? Technically, my first game of management, as everything else, I've been on holiday. So maybe it's better if I just stick to the sidelines and watch the coaches do it. Because clearly, I'm not very good at it. Um, 55 minutes in, Shoratiro's on a 6.1. Rashford's on a 6.2. And Garnacho is on a 6.3. And McNeil's on a 6.4. Um, right, okay, let's get Dan Gore on. Let's get Hanson Aaron on for McNeil. Get Rashford up front. And get Garnacho on the left and Hanson Aaron in camp. Let's see if Isaac can be the difference maker. He was the star of the Louis Joe's Peterborough Sports save. Um, where was No, not Peterborough Sports. Was it Peterborough Sports? No, it wasn't. It was his Peterborough save. Uh, he was a star there with Endrick. Can he be a star for us here as well? Just 15 minutes to go. There's only one goal in it. We just need a sniff at goal and I feel like we'll score. Um... I don't feel like we'll score at all, if I'm honest, from what I've seen. <laughs> the stats have been very heavily based on City. You can see, though, from the tactic, at least defensively, it's very good at high press. Um, there's not a lot of time on the ball for the opposition. The centre-backs have done very well at that and stepping out and intercepting the ball. We've seen that a couple of times. And we're also going to see a Brandon Williams red card. If you know anything about Brandon Williams in real life, that won't shock you in the slightest. Um, let's get... Hannibal off and get Louis Jackson on at right back, not Charlie Savage. Um, and you know what? Let's get Zidane on as well. Mm, can we get Zidane on? We can't really get Zidane on because I want to see keep Kobe in the side. Um, yeah, that's not good. Ten men, not good. De Bruyne with a free kick, back post. Safe to say the FA Cup is done. Um, 2 0 Spanish to City in the 80th minute. We've not seen a lot from the tactic, sadly. Um, I think the, the youth only challenge may be a step too far facing the old. Sports washing money bags of Man City. <laughs> I'm just salty because they're so good. Um, but to be fair, I think we've shown kids can win things. Not everything, but playing with just youth can win things. And a, two Premier Leagues, a Champions League, sadly no FA Cup, I think is no mean feat in the slightest. Um, this tactic itself, like I said, made by GYRFM, will be down in the comments. Don't take this game as word. Take the results you've seen so far as how good this tactic is and if you aren't sure again there's a video on tuesday a tactic tester we texted with three different sides so you can see the results from that as well this tactic is unbelievable and we've managed to rebuild united back to some sort of glory with just youth players so i think as a united fan that is fantastic to see um we are going to finish off this game just quickly i hope it doesn't end in too long i want to sort of cap off the video here with a nice little ending not preferably with a goal from Man City, but a Garnacho interception. And he's just, yeah, we're getting dominated by City. Saka. He doesn't put us out of his misery. I thought he was going to make it 3 0, and we we're going to finish off on a City goal. Um, but Garnacho's back on the ball. Yeah, just. They've got Enzo Fernandez as well. It's not fun. Play with youth, City. Enzo Fernandez. Oh, that is outrageous. The Lion nearly got chipped, but he doesn't. Luckily, he doesn't manage to get chipped, which is good. Foden gets it in the box to Saka. And it's just relentless pressing from City. But surely, that is the highlight. Um, I'm going to finish here and bring you guys back at the end. Well, the youth only rebuild ends with Man City lifting the FA Cup. But like I said, one Champions League, two Premier League titles. 
and a very successful spell for United in the last five years with just youth only. You can see how good the tactic is. If you want to see more rebuilds like this based on tactics made by GYRFM and potentially any managers you want, I'll ask him to recreate. Get down in the comments below. Um, and let me know any managers you want to see recreated. Obviously, this is a Ten Hag style of play and hopefully we can do that for anyone else as well. Um, but I think a very, very successful tactic tester here. I think you guys will agree as well. It's been great fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel for more rebuilds in the future and more tactic testers and Wrexham as well. I'll speak to you guys next time.